So in this section, we are going to be talking about information gathering. And all the information gathering we're going to do in this section is going to be passive. So I'm calling this passive recon or passive reconnaissance. I wanted to give a brief overview of what we're going to be covering and talk about some high level topics before we get into the weeds and really dive into our target. So let's talk about the different types of passive recon. So on the physical or social sides, physical meaning actually going on site and maybe doing a physical engagement or the social engineering aspect of maybe doing a fishing assessment or even including it in a physical engagement or a fishing assessment, just gathering this information from the physical social aspect is incredibly useful. So we have location information. So we might utilize something like satellite images or often we'll go on site and do drone reconnaissance where we fly a drone around and try to gain information. And what we're really after with these images of this drone recon is we're trying to find out, hey, what does the building layout look like? Are there badge readers? Are there break areas? Does security exist? Do they have somebody posted out up front? Can you just walk right in the door? What does their fencing look like? Are there areas where they're just leaving the doors propped open? Where do people go out and smoke in these break areas? Because those are a good place to just walk up to somebody, light up a cigarette, even if you don't smoke, and just start a conversation, and then tailgate right in with them into the building. Now, the other aspect of this is the job information. So we might be looking for employees online. I might want to know somebody's name, job title, phone number, who their manager is. I try to get a good idea of what people look like. So if I see them on site, I have a good idea who they are. I also look for pictures, so I cannot tell you how many times a badge photo is posted on LinkedIn or somebody posted on Twitter. You can see all the memes out there about people posting their photos at work, and it's bad. It happens all the time. I see it to this day. So we're looking for badge photos. I'm looking for desk photos, computer photos. I had a situation once where somebody took a picture of her watching a game at work. She was watching a basketball game at work and the basketball game was on her computer and on her screen there, it showed all the different tools that they utilized at work. She had a work application open in this photo. There was a desk in the background. You can see different things and it just gives us information. And that's really what we're after. What kind of information can we gather? Now this course is not a course on physical or social. So I kind of wanted to give a high level of what to expect. We won't really be doing a whole lot of this in this course with this type of information gathering, but these are the things that you should be looking for. So if you are tasked with a physical assessment, do go out there and look for satellite images, try to get a good feel of the building layout, and also try to get a feel for who the employees are, who maybe the IT manager is in case you're going to say, you know, I work for IT. They might ask you who your manager is. You might need to know those names. And of course, look for pictures. If you can find a good badge photo and what that looks like, you can make a fake badge, go on site, and you'll be way more passable with that badge. But sometimes they don't even look. It could be drawn in crayon. So from there, let's go ahead and talk about what we will be doing a lot of, which is the web and host. So when you get a web or a host assessment, the first thing you really should do is what is called target validation. So we're going to be targeting something on bug crowds. We're not really going to focus on this, but what we're going to do in the real world is we would validate the target. Now, there are situations where a client will give you an IP address or a website and they might they might fudge it, right? They might accidentally fat finger it, put uh, the wrong number, put the wrong letter in the website. And then guess what? You're off attacking somebody else's website. And there, if you are a podcast listener, there's a good Darknet Diaries episode on this. If you don't listen to Darknet Diaries, go check it out. There's a great episode with a guy named Rob Fuller, a.k.a. Mubix, and he talks about getting the wrong IP address on an assessment and attacking the wrong people and actually gaining access to that machine, which is a really, really big big screw up on both parts, right? So you should always validate your targets. On top of this, when we're doing our web and our host, on the website, we're gonna look for subdomains and we'll talk more about that as we get into it. 
but we can do that with Google, we can do that with Nmap, Sublister, there's so many different tools that we can use and we'll cover some of the tools and how to do it. Get a little deep into that as well, especially as we get into the website of things. There's fingerprinting, we need to know what's running on a website or what's running on a host, what kind of services are out there. Are they running a web server? What's that web server? Is it IAS? Is it Apache? What version is it? Right? Are they running? What ports are open on their machines? Oh, they have FTP open. What version of FTP is open? So we need to fingerprint machines and kind of understand. But on the passive side, we're not touching any machine, right? So we're not going to be doing much scanning against a host. We just have to utilize what kind of information might already be out there. So if we go out to a website, it's on the border of active, but as long as we're not scanning it, in my book, it's still passive. So we'll do, we will cover some of the passive slash active side in this section. And then when we get into scanning, we'll get way more active with it. Lastly, we're going to hit heavy, especially in the beginning on data breaches. Data breaches are the most common way when we're doing an external assessment that we get into networks. Absolutely by far. When we talk about data breaches, we're talking about breached incidents from the past that have leaked data. Again, these are like Home Depot, Equifax, LinkedIn, all kinds of breaches that are out there that have had credentials dumped. And then those credentials become available to us eventually. And we try to utilize those to gain access or at least utilize the usernames to gain access. Nowadays, most of the time, there's not going to be an easy just scan, find something vulnerable and exploit it on the external side of the house. So we're looking for these data breaches and this information that we can gather. And this is why information gathering and then enumeration and scanning, most important by far. The better scanning enumeration that you can do and the better information gathering you can do, the better hacker you're going to be and the better you're going to be at your job. So take these first two sections really serious. So we're going to start in with identifying what our target's going to be for this part of the section. And then we're going to go ahead and start talking about data breaches and why they're important and go deeper into that. And then we'll go off some of these tools that you see here on this list and really dive into those. So I will look forward to seeing you in the next video when we identify our target and get some information gathering started.